Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at a couple of the new updates to Fusion for March 2024. There have been a lot of updates to things like simulation and generative design and PCB, but we're going to focus on a couple of the big ones that I find are probably more important to most of the people watching this channel. So the first thing that's changed is the STL export. Now, in the past, when users would go to file and export and select an STL, an OBJ, or a 3MF file, what would happen is that would go through the cloud translation process. And what this means is you're essentially uploading it and you're getting the conversion and then you'll be able to download it. Now with OBJ, 3MF, and the STL, you'll get that instantly because it's no longer going through that cloud translation process. That's not true for the FBX format, but the other mesh formats have now gone through that process. And the downside to this is that it takes everything in your design. So if I wanted, say, just a controller bottom, I would still need to right click and do save as mesh. Now, for my purposes, I'm still going to use the right click option for a couple of reasons. One is it gives me the ability to pick my format and control the refinement level. You don't have the control of the refinement level if you're using the file export. It's going to come out as a default medium refinement. The second is we can send it to a 3D print utility directly, which means there, there's no STL, OBJ, or 3MF saved anywhere. Uh, that simplifies the process of storing and managing and dealing with all of these extra files that you really don't need. So this allows me to send it directly to my 3D print utility, and if I need to save it, I can save that 3D print file with all of the settings in it. So that's one thing that's changed for Fusion in March 2024. The next thing I want to talk about is actually more on the data end of things. In the Manage tab, we now have something called BOM or Bill of Materials. If you're not dealing with assemblies and you're not really dealing with manufacture, you probably don't need to worry about Bill of Materials, but it's a nice addition for a couple of reasons. Now, first thing I want to do is drag this thing out and notice that there's a lot here. Now, if you're not using the Manage extension, which is basically a product data management check-in, check-out system, then some of this isn't really needed or isn't going to make sense. Things like lifecycle, revision, as well as this drop-down up here for working or released. If you use the three dots in the top right, you can see assign item numbers, add new change order, quick release. These are all stages in the process for that manage extension. So if you're dealing with a large organization and you have to check in and check out or reserve files and track their life cycles, then you're using the manage extension. This bill of materials is going to be helpful to you. However, if you're just dealing with large assemblies, this can still be a very handy tool. Now, what I mean by that is if I'm looking for something in a large assembly, sometimes traversing through that inside of the browser can be tricky. What we can do here is we can search through and we can find the components we're interested in. For example, I want to see just these screws. When I click on this button here and I select close, all the screws are going to be selected and highlighted on the screen. It will also highlight where it's located in the browser, and you can see they're highlighted and selected here. So it is a quicker and nice way that we can traverse through an expanded or contracted browser, especially when we're dealing with dozens, if not hundreds of components. Other than that, inside the bill of materials, we have options to do things like create a share link, we can also export this as an XLS or as a CSV file. Now, again, this is the first day that this has been out and I've noticed that the XLS doesn't really work, but the CSV export does work. Now, if we take a look at what a share link looks like for this, it's basically the same view that you would see in there, but it's in your web. What you can do from here is everything you can do locally. You can see that I've got working and released options. We've got some settings up here for changing what's visible. If I don't want to see things like the state of the design, revision, and life cycle, uh, I can simply toggle all those things off. We can also click on different components. So for example, if I highlight this, we can also traverse back and forth between components, take a look at their properties, and even view them in 3D if needed. Hopping back into Fusion, the last thing that I really want to mention that's updated for March 2024 has to do with drawings. Now, if you don't create detailed drawings, probably not super interested to you, but there are two changes that are going to be helpful. Now, I do plan to do a video on automated drawings in the near future, just haven't quite gotten to it yet. But the first change that we see for this release in March is the ability to measure the max and min distances to arcs. So if I right click, we now have a curve X, Y, min, max option, which lets me select a curve. And you can see I've got the max distance vertically there. 
And if I drag this up or down, it should give me the max horizontal distance based on the points I selected. So these are really nice options, especially if you're dealing with parts that have curves on them. Uh, in most cases, this might not make a whole lot of sense, but the way it works is that we can select either a vertex or we can select a line. And then we have to select a portion of our arc and it'll give us the max distance for that. So again, when you're dealing with designs that have these curves in the past, you really wouldn't have been able to put a detailed dimension on there. Now it's kind of helpful, especially if you're dealing with complex shapes and you might want to take a look at that larger size. To the best of my knowledge, this still needs to be a true arc. It cannot be something like a spline or a conic curve, but for the most part, if you're adding detailed dimensions to a design like this, it's going to be an arc anyways. The other thing that has been added has to do with views. And the way that we do this, if we take a look at creating, let's say, a base view. Now, oftentimes when we create a base view, we may want an isometric view. And the isometric views are great. However, there is a new option that allows us to change the focal length of that view. Now, in this case, we don't see that inside of our drawing view dialog. The way that you get to it is actually by right clicking on that component inside of our browser and selecting perspective view. From here, what we can do is we can select the view that we want. In this case, let's go to a Northwest isometric, and then we can select whether we want narrow or wide focal length. So when you're dealing with bigger objects, larger objects, oftentimes it can be helpful to have that perspective view as a different view on your detailed drawing. And that's something that's been added in this March release of 2024. Now, as I mentioned, there are a lot of other updates that have happened to Fusion in the simulation, generative design, PCB, as well as some other improvements in the general workflow. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the product update for what's new, but you can always go to your help menu and go to what's new and find it there. If you have any questions on these updates or anything else that you want to see on the channel, please leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.